The Clarity, Part 2. If you've not listened to it already, please listen to The Clarity, Part 1, where I deal with common thoughts and queries which arise with regard to victims of narcissists and decode them and decipher them for you. The video, The Wrong Focus, explained how we construct the wrong focus so you end up on concentrating on us rather than yourselves, and this in turn hinders you, prevents you from moving forward, and enables us to keep you where we want you, miserable, confused, and wallowing in emotion, catering to the prime aims. As I explained The Wrong Focus, I explained 30 constituent parts of it. Now I continue with the second part of that, by giving you an explanation for those questions and feelings and thoughts that you have by being the bringer of logic. Number 16. You want us to explain why we did what we did. This, of course, is driven by your truth seeker trait. This isn't going to happen. We are not accountable to you. Through our sense of entitlement, we are not there to provide you with answers. Indeed, if we have moved on with somebody else, we want to focus on them and not you. Instead, we will not give you the answers. Or if we start to provide you with some kind of explanation, it will not be the actual reality of what has occurred because most narcissists don't know what it is or where they do, they're certainly not going to tell you. The best way that you can enact an explanation for why the narcissist behaved as he did or she did is not to ask them. It is not to speak to your friends and invite their opinion about what went on. It is to utilise me and my work. I will provide you with the answers. The narcissist will not. I will provide you with the answers for each and every scenario, each and every dynamic, so that you gain that understanding. 17. You try to make sense of what has happened, but you cannot. This does not, however, stop you from running the whole relationship through your head over and over again as you seek to find answers. There is no point in doing this. You are being misled by your emotional thinking, which is trying to keep you in the fifth arena, namely thinking about the narcissist. Instead of running over the relationship and trying to fathom out why this happened, why that happened, you apply my work. That is where the answers lie. 18. You sit and ask yourself, are we thinking about you? In short, no, we're not. We have moved on. You have become persona non grata. You do not exist to us until you appear in a sphere of influence, either caused by you contacting us, or as a consequence of us being reminded of you, or having a random thought about you. It is a common misconception to think that the narcissist is sat obsessing about you, even when we are not with you. We are not. We're dealing with what is in front of us, and not thinking about you. Of course, that doesn't mean that you'll be completely forgotten about, but we are not sat there, thinking over and over about you. Far from it. 19. You ruminate on whether we miss you at all. We don't miss you. We miss your prime aims. But at the moment, if we disengage from you, we don't miss them at all, because you became a bad appliance, a malfunctioning appliance, and in our world we were right to get rid of you. But we never, ever miss you for who you are. Number 20. Does she kiss us like you did? She may do, she may not do. It is irrelevant. By focusing upon that, you are keeping yourself engaged with the narcissist which is contrary to the principles of no contact, and should be resisted. Even if she does not kiss as well as you did, we'll tell you that she did, in order to triangulate you, should you come knocking on our door. And, of course, at the appropriate point, when that person becomes painted black and you become painted white again, and we hoover you, we will, of course, say that you were the better kisser. We are expedient. You are good. When you're painted white, everything about you is bad when you're painted black, and that applies to everybody else. 21. Do we love her more than we loved you? We will tell the world, and you and her, that we've never loved anyone like this before. Of course we have. It's always the same, even though it isn't love. We will say to this person that we've never loved anybody in this way. But of course we said that to you, and we said it to the person that we met before you, each one seemingly scaling new heights, that we were somehow wrong last time, and this time this is the one. The reality is, this is said in the moment because of the infatuation, this is said in the moment as part of the need to bring you under control through seduction, and then it all goes wrong. Remember, 
the narcissist cannot love. 22. Have we kept the gifts that you gave us? In some instances, these gifts are jettisoned. It might have been as a consequence of wounding that you caused, and in the moment, as part of the assertion of control, we destroyed and got rid of those gifts. More usually, they are kept. They're put to one side. And this poses a risk for you that at some juncture we will look at them, they will create a hoover trigger, and then, if the circumstances are right, we will assert control over you by hoovering you. Reminded to do so, in effect, by the presence of these gifts. 23. Why have we deleted all the pictures of you on social media? You are persona non grata. You have been deleted. You no longer exist, and therefore every trace of you with regard to those pictures has been removed. Also, and this is the chief aim of it, it is actually to keep the new target happy. Our narcissism operates to assert control over all appliances at all times. Control is asserted over by you through withdrawal. You no longer exist to us. The new intimate partner primary source, our narcissism guides us to prevent us from doing something which affects control over them. The maintenance of pictures of you on the social media profile may well affect that control, and therefore in those circumstances, they are deleted. Of course, in other instances where they are not, there will be an alternative explanation for that. That might be, for instance, because the new individual isn't yet the primary source, and therefore we are keeping options open. If you want guidance on that, these are what the consultations are for. 25. Why are we saying those things about you to other people? We're smearing you. It's part of the indirect assertion of control. Your presence threatens our control over you in some way. It might be that these people have asked about you, and thus you come back on the radar. And when you do, it is necessary for us to assert control over you. Our narcissism deems that it is not appropriate to hoover you directly, and therefore, in that moment, it is far more effective for us to assert control over the listener and in our world over you by smearing you. Everybody gets them. You're nothing special. 26. Do we feel bad at the way that we treated you? Absolutely not. We are incapable of guilt, remorse, and we have no conscience. Any individual that is a narcissist that claims to have felt bad is of course telling you a lie, and that is a further manipulation. 27. Why does it feel like no matter what you do, we always seem to win? That is because the rules are adopted to suit us. We change the rules, we amend the rules, we invent the rules, we get rid of the ones we don't like and replace them with new ones. It feels like we always seem to win because we walk, march off into the sunset arm in arm with our new find whilst you're left with the chaos of the relationship left behind. We seem to win because basically we do not care. You do win. But you win by no longer caring about trying to win. You remove yourself from the battlefield. 28. Will we ever speak to you again? Oh yes, in all likelihood that will happen when it is Hoover time. 29. Will our friends and family still acknowledge you after everything that has happened? Some may do so, on the quiet, but often no, they are in our camp, and therefore, when we smear you, they become affected by that, and are more likely to ignore you. 30. What if the next person is the one? Of course she is. In our world, the replacement is always the one. Until the next one, and the one after that, and the one after that. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.